This is day zero of me building and launching my tech startup from scratch in 90 days. And in this video, I'll be sharing the seven step plan that I've come up with to launch this business. Hey folks, I'm Addy, and in this series, I'll be documenting my journey with this tech startup. But here's the thing. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to build, and I have zero experience building any sort of business. And to be completely honest, I don't feel ready to take on something this big on my own. But I'm going to be doing it anyways, because I've always wanted to do something like this. And let's face it, there's never really going to be a perfect time to do that. So over the next 90 days, I'll be documenting everything, like the ideas that I come up with, the research that I do, the problems that I face and the systems that I build as I launch this startup from scratch. And hopefully by the end of these 90 days, I'll have some exciting results to share with you guys, including how much money I've made. It's going to be a wild ride packed with a ton of valuable content and I'm taking you along for the journey with me. Okay, now let's get back to the seven step plan. The first step of this plan is what I'm calling the problem identification phase. And this is probably the most obvious step of all, because to build a business, you need to find a problem that's worth solving. Now, if you're someone like me, then you've probably consumed a ton of content from successful entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Sam Altman. And the general advice from these entrepreneurs is that most successful startups are the ones that are built by addressing a certain pain point that's faced by a small group of people. For example, Jeff Bezos started Amazon to solve the problem of limited access to books. He saw an opportunity to create an online bookstore that could offer a much wider selection of books than any physical bookstore could at that time, making it a lot easier for people to find and purchase the books that they actually wanted. Similarly, Facebook was started by Mark Zuckerberg in his college dorm room to help students connect with one another. Now, there are tons of other examples like Amazon and Facebook out there, but the point is that most successful businesses are created by finding and addressing a certain pain point faced by a certain group of people. So for this step, I really want to spend some time understanding how you would go about finding a group of people who are facing a certain problem. And from there, understand how to decide if a problem is even worth pursuing in the first place. I've set aside about a week's worth of time for this phase to really make sure that I get this part right. The next step is something that I'm calling the pre-execution step. Now, if you listen to podcasts by entrepreneurs like Paul Graham, who's the co-founder of Y Combinator, you'll often hear them emphasize that the number one factor for determining a startup success isn't the idea itself but it's how effectively that startup can execute on that idea. And maybe that's something that sounds really obvious and simple to you, but when I hear that, the question that comes to my mind is, how exactly do you take an idea and execute it on it correctly so that your business ends up being successful? I honestly have no idea, which is why for this step, I'm going to be exploring exactly that to make sure that I'm doing all that I can to set myself up for success and maximize my chances of making a profit with this business. And to be a bit more specific, I'm going to be reading a bunch of books on creating successful startups and leveraging systems within my business. I'll also be making a list of any other tools that I can leverage to really help me move with speed and agility. And to do that, I've set aside about one week's worth of time, which may be short, but I think I'll learn a lot more by actually building the business. So I don't really want to spend too much time on this step. The third step is what I'm calling the execution phase, and it's where I'll be building the software for this business from the ground up. Now, I know this might not sound like the most exciting part to everyone, but trust me, there is a gold mine of information to uncover over here. For example, how do you actually design a technical solution and choose the right tech stack for your project? What's the best way to architect your software to maximize flexibility and agility? How do you set up cloud computing infrastructure that's primed for scale? Because if my business suddenly goes viral, I want to be ready to handle that sudden traffic surge. What's the most effective way to implement analytics so that I can collect meaningful data and make data driven decisions? And perhaps most importantly, where do I even go to learn all of this stuff? So hopefully I've convinced you that there's a lot to figure out for this step, which is why I'll be dedicating a significant chunk of time for this phase, probably around 30 days. 
Now, once the software is built, I'll be moving on to step four, which I'm calling the launch prep phase. Now, this is where things start to get really exciting and honestly a bit nerve wracking for me. The launch prep phase is all about bridging that gap between having a great product and actually getting it into the hands of paying customers. It's all about turning those cold leads, which are people who have never heard of my product, into excited paying users. And let me tell you, there's a lot more to this step than just putting a buy now button on a website and hoping people will purchase the product. So during this phase, I'll be diving into several key areas. First, I'll be looking into designing a killer sales funnel, which is basically the journey a potential customer takes from first hearing about my product to becoming an actual paying user. Next, I'll be crafting a robust marketing plan because even the best product in the world won't sell itself, unfortunately. From there, I'll move on to building an SEO optimized landing page. And this is basically my product's homepage on the internet, and it needs to be both aesthetic and findable on search engines like Google. Then comes one of the trickiest parts, which is developing a pricing strategy. So if I price my product too high, then I scare people away. And if I price it too low, then I leave money on the table and potentially incur a loss. So for this step, I'll be diving into different pricing models and try to figure out how to choose the right one for my product. Now, all that work I do during this phase isn't going to mean a thing if I can't actually reach my target audience. So next, I'll be investigating where my target audience spends most of their time online and how to actually reach them, which will basically help me choose the right platform to surface ads on. Finally, I'll be learning the ins and outs of setting up an ad campaign on platforms like Google, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I'll be allocating about 30 days for this phase, and I have a feeling it's going to be a real whirlwind of learning and experimentation. Now, once all the launch prep is complete, I'll be moving on to step five, which I'm calling the soft launch phase. The soft launch is all about giving a small group of users access to my application to help me catch any major flaws or bugs before I make it live. These issues could be anything from simple UI inconsistencies to more severe problems where certain interactions with my application can break it entirely. And the goal here is to iron out as many kinks as possible before the official launch. And although this phase sounds pretty simple, it comes with its own set of challenges as well. For starters, how do I find the right set of users to test out my application? I need people who not only fit my target audience, but who are also willing to provide detailed and honest feedback. So it's not as simple as just asking friends and family to click around for a bit. Then there's the question of how to set up a system for collecting feedback. Now, do I use surveys? Do I conduct user interviews? Are there certain analytics tools that I could use? But basically, how do I make sure I'm getting the most valuable insights possible from these people who are testing out my application? And the final thing to tackle in this step is that once I have all this feedback, how do I actually decide which pieces to act on and which to put on the back burner? So I'm planning to dedicate about one week to this soft launch phase, and I think it's going to be a crucial time for learning and refining my product. Now, once the soft launch phase is done and all major feedback has been addressed, I'll be moving on to the most exciting part of this journey, which is the official launch of the product. Now, the centerpiece of the launch will be making the SEO optimized landing page live and kicking off the marketing campaign that I designed during the pre-launch phase. I have to admit, I'm both excited and really nervous about this part. It's one thing to work on something in private, but it's a whole different thing when you're putting it out there for the whole world to see. Now, after the official launch, the last step would be to monitor the performance of the ads and optimize wherever I see an opportunity for improvement. So this phase is all about keeping a close eye on how the application is performing in the real world. I'll be monitoring everything from how users are interacting with the app application to how well the marketing campaign is actually performing. And this phase doesn't really have an end date. And in fact, if I'm doing things right, I'll be monitoring and optimizing continuously as long as the application exists. I'm particularly excited about this phase because it's where I'll really see if all the hard work pays off. And it's where I'll finally share how much money the startup makes. So that's the general plan that I'm going to be following for the next 90 days. And I don't know about you, but I'm super excited to jump right into it. I think there's going to be a lot of insanely valuable stuff that I'll learn and my hope is that by documenting it and sharing it on YouTube, I'm able to help out anyone else who's ever dreamed of starting their own tech startup but doesn't really know how to get started. 
So yeah, if this 90 day challenge sounds remotely interesting, then consider liking this video to boost it on YouTube and consider hitting that subscribe button as well to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes.